What's up, guys? Matt here coming at you with this brand new Slayer Elite Mullet build. This thing, uh, I've worked on this for a little bit, kind of been a uh, a project. You know, Josh was, uh, this is a vision he had, he built, and, you know, was kind of still working some of the kinks out and uh, just told me, you know, hey, like, take it and work on it. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm still kind of working through this. And so, you know, it maybe took a little longer than a lot of builds just to get together because uh, I was kind of just watching some of his videos, seeing the way he had things together and then asking him some questions here and there. And, uh, you know, he's, he was great to work with and got me sorted out on it, but it's just one of those things like I can have a vision, build it. It works great. And then when you go to, you know, try to get somebody else to build that and explain it to them, it, it just it, it takes a little bit of time and uh so this one i've put quite a bit of time into this one but i gotta say this thing is unbelievable um the way it downhills you'll see right here hardly anything will slow crawl down this and look how it just sucks into the rock there and just i mean i i could just let it slide down this basically you know most trucks when you get to just over that peak you've got to just kind of punch it and run down that this thing i mean it could have just easily just slid all the way down without even bumping the throttle so uh it's really cool how it just stays sucked into the rocks um, a lot of that has to do with the chassis and the band setup and everything the way he's got it all figured out and we will talk about that a little later but i just wanted to start off with some running so you guys could see this thing just absolutely dominating the course uh, this climb here, this is one of those where I was talking about like those, uh, swamp claws just cannot get this done with no matter what I put them on that. Uh, but you can see the DJ crawler tires, perfect. And they worked amazing on these wheels. Like they are the perfect fit for these wheels, which are also from Texas RC. So, um, a lot of really cool stuff here. This entire build is just his chassis wheels, links everything and it all works amazing you can see side hill here unreal some of the lines it's doing look at that i mean just completely twisted on its side with the rear end there and it holds the front down stays sucked into the rock and just walks around the edge of this thing like nothing So when I was talking to Josh about this thing, he was like, look, it's it's not that it's a ton different than my Slayer or, you know, anything else like that. But it just has that little extra, you know, the little extra tricks that it can do. And I totally get what he's meaning because this thing just, it has just a little something extra that nothing else really has. I mean, watch it go down this right here. Nothing really slow crawls this. And you'll see how when the front starts getting over the edge, how it just sucks the belly in, really drops down, and then just slow crawl walks down this. I mean, crazy. And this don't look steep on video. I mean, I, none of this stuff ever does, but I promise you that's steep. And I don't know that I have any other rig that slow crawls down that like that. I mean, I can get most of it and then maybe nudge it a little. But look at that. This thing it's unreal and it's very easy to tell what he's talking about the little extra something it, it's definitely there um you know this build it was a little frustrating at times i'm not gonna lie about that but it was also like i i came into it looking at it like you know this is something completely out of this world like different and when you're when you're building something like that you just gotta know like it's not just gonna go together like nothing you know i mean it's gonna take a little work and you know scratching your head a little bit and and really digging in to get it to work out but i'm telling you like it's so worth the time on this one when it's done it's insane right there i lost a little bit with the front tires they shouldn't have slid out like that i don't know why they did that but had to back up just a little bit 
but this thing had no issues going up down across anything on this course like it just ate it alive uh like this right here i was like i started to go up that and i thought well that's just too easy i've done that a million times let's let's see if i can just like cross this gnarly rock here and see what happens and see i just kind of slid down i hooked that's the rear portal right there hooking on that still got the clearance to get over it and then the thing side hills so freaking amazing it's able to just walk off of that rock like it's nothing so some of the stuff this thing was pulling i was just amazed uh, i can't wait to get this out to like some tougher spots where i can do some hanging lines and stuff but um again this one right here you really just kind of have to work the side of the left tire on the rock to the left there to get up this and it goes up at like nothing stays sucked into the rock but still has all that clearance to get over the lip at the top and um i mean i'm just absolutely blown away with the performance of this thing so glad i put the work in to build this and really glad that josh put the work in I, there's no telling how many hours he has into figuring this out because the thing about this thing is like if you just bolt it up <laughs> the way he says it's gonna work like it works you don't have to really go tuning adjusting anything you know you can buy a cheap chassis here or there and get it and then you got to figure out the the right links to put with it and where to mount them and all that stuff and still not going to end up with this type of performance most of the time uh this you know i'm sure he'll hopefully have a video showing exactly how to put this all together and where to put this and that and if you just follow along with what he says on this thing it's it's done deal i mean it's just unbelievable what this thing can pull watch it right here again just really sucking into the rock now i've got a few rigs that'll do this one but <laughs> again it, i didn't have to figure anything out on this I just built it like he said and boom it's it's done uh this right here is a very tough climb gotta kind of wedge your right tire in there to get started at all because it's it's steeper than it looks um and you kind of got to keep a little pressure on that right front as you can see and then you got to have the clearance once you get where you want to be to even get over this at all and this thing i mean really it just did it like pretty easy so uh again i, I can't say enough how like excited i am about this thing and how amazed i was with how easy it was pulling some of these lines All right, so hopefully you guys have already seen this thing slaying. This is the Slayer Elite mullet build. Uh, this is another Texoma RC build. This thing looks very sweet. If you don't know what a mullet is, um, you're obviously not from Kentucky where I'm at. Uh, no, seriously though, uh, basically a mullet is just straight front axle, portal rear. That's something I did a while back um, with the SCX24 axles and a rear panda portal because the panda portal worm gear actually spins the opposite direction so like it was a pretty simple build with this uh we're going to use a trx4m front because these things have some crazy steering angle to them and uh pretty decent axles i've struggled with like three different ones getting it to be smooth I don't know what the problem was of getting this just real bad hang up, changed bearings, did everything I could think of. I mean, I've seriously pulled three of these things apart, messing with them. Finally got this one working right. I don't know. I didn't change anything. It just, I took it apart, put it back, took it apart, put it back. And finally it's smooth. So don't jinx that axle right now. Um, and then for the rear, we're going to have this FCX portal axle. So, the main problem is like the portal gears here reverse your 
direction. So this thing's gonna spin the opposite direction of the front. So we've got to flip this ring gear. So really all you're gonna have to do is take out these screws here, pull this, We're gonna take these four screws out and then we're gonna flip this gear. And you can see I've already pulled this apart and stole the bearings off of it because I'm gonna be running this open diff that I locked up with some uh, JB Weld or whatever, epoxy. Uh, I just have a bunch of these around. That's why I'm still using them. So uh, we're gonna take this, flip it, put it in here and flip the cover so that it fits. Now, I'm going to change this plastic gear here really quick, and then we'll get this together this way, and that will reverse the direction, and we should match up with the TRX4M front axle. Then, basically, from there, it's just kind of assembling all of this. We're going to use this link mount up top here, so we're not going to be using these. And um, other than that, everything is here. Josh sent tons of parts so we've got a couple colors we can mix and match around it comes with the links that you need everything so i'm um, gonna have to throw some ball studs in these links and besides that just start putting it together so should be fairly simple build um, and very interesting so i went with the cedar motor in here just because honestly this is the only extra trx 4m transmission setup i had at the moment had this motor pulled from the Evo where I just kind of played around with it in there. So I'm, I'm going to go this route. Uh, I think we're going motor front, I believe on this build and, uh, very excited to get this thing going. I got some new tires on the way. That's going to go on some of these wheels from Josh as well. So this should be a very exciting build when we get this thing together. You've already seen it destroy a little bit, but, uh, I just kind of wanted to show you what we're doing with the axle. I'll talk a little bit about a couple things we have to do to make this work, and then we'll just do some more running and thoughts on it. If you have to swap over from a plastic gear to something like these metal gears, put a little Loctite on this screw that goes into this pinion gear here, so that will focus, because I have those come loose quite a bit if it doesn't have some Loctite on it. So just a little tip, you'll think you stripped a gear and it's just that screw has come loose and that gear is just turning on that shaft. So definitely put a little Loctite on that guy. All right, so you've seen it run. This thing is an absolute beast. I wanted to just show you a couple things. Uh, with the build, I was pretty aggravated when I was trying to put this together because it's very tight in here. It's hard to get to everything. Um, the way the shocks mount on the inside, very tough to get to the screws and stuff, but it keeps everything so nice and clean. You don't have any hangups here. So if you completely hang this thing on the side of a rock somewhere, you're not going to catch on a shock mount back here. You know, you're going to just slide off that cage, which you may be able to save yourself coming out of something, you know, so, uh, versus like, you know, this kind of going to hang up on that shock, that sort of thing. So, uh, the nice clean bottom here. It works really well. It just makes it a little tougher to work on. So at first I felt like I had too much overdrive in the front. It didn't want to climb very well. I took it out to start with and it just didn't want to climb up things. And I was like, what is going on? This thing looks insane. It should perform like crazy. And so I ended up putting overdrive gears in the FCX rear axle, which caught it up a little bit. I still have a great amount of overdrive and I'll show you that in a minute, but it drives much better with the overdrive in here. So with my setup, that just seemed to work better. The Cedar and Lizard Pro works awesome with this setup. SCA or F that TRX4M transmission, TRX4M front axle, FCX rear. Me, I would probably just soon have the FCX front axle as well. I just dragged that front diff on everything on the TRX4M front axle. And gaining just a little bit of clearance really doesn't raise the ride height much. And I, I just would prefer it. Uh, probably lose a little steering angle, but I can live with that. Uh, these FCX axles, once you do a little bit of work on them, moving the screw, you can 
grind things down a little bit, you can get pretty good turning angle out of them. So, uh, you know, I'm losing a little bit, yes, but I could probably deal with that. Uh, just to keep that clearance, this drives me nuts. But uh, it works, man, this thing just flat out works. So the front hood, I love the look of that. I may have to kind of work things out a little bit to where I can fit that, but with the ESC up front like I did here, it just wouldn't quite fit. But the way this goes on is genius. You know, he's got the magnet that sticks into here and it's also captured with this little clip so you're not just relying on the magnet which isn't going to hold it well that will help it stay on so uh, that's a very cool idea when i built mine i left out all of the rod ends on the links i just it seemed to be way more free like that i was getting into some like binding and so i was like for one i didn't have enough of them to drill out and put in there. So I just left them out and it works really well. I don't have any like real axle roll chatter, you know, going on there, anything. And I mean, the thing drives insane. So it, that worked out fine. I did put those in the steering. Uh, so when you get this, you have to kind of put those rod ends in. So just know there's a good amount of custom work to get this thing completely built but in the end, the performance is just insane. Uh, I do have these rubber bands running. The links on this thing have like these hooks, so you can run rubber bands from here up, just hooked on a screw that I put in on the inside here. And uh, same for the front, you have like a hook on this link right here, which has a rubber band going down to a screw on the inside here. And that just keeps everything pulled down. So you can see this thing has crazy clearance when you need it. If you're hung up on something, it can drop down and take off again, but it stays completely pulled down. So that all just works really well. Here I got some squeaking somewhere. I did have a little issue getting the front to be smooth. It still don't have a ton of travel just because these shocks are pretty short, but man, the thing drives so good. Like I hate to even mess with it at all. Uh, but it is a little stiff in the front. I couldn't quite get that worked out as smooth as I wanted But it's driving really well, so I'm not gonna worry about it So now we're gonna talk about these wheels because these are some of the easiest wheels to mount up Like these DJ crawler tires on the Enjora 64 millimeters and a few others. They just They're super simple to mount. I mean, they just really are they go together so easy and the cool thing about these They have BBs in them. So uh, that's an old mod from way back in the day, you know, but the cool thing with these wheels is they're kind of designed for them. So you have your outer ring over here and then you have this track inside of the wheel that allows the BBs to just kind of roll in there. So when you get these together, you've got a hole here. You can just drop BBs down into, kind of fill them up. So as this wheel rolls, those BBs roll and they stay on the bottom, which keeps that extra weight as low as possible. I use some brass BBs. We've got tons of them around here. Drop them in. Then once you put your hex on, it fills that, covers that hole so you don't have to worry about them falling back out. Uh, so man, that works really well. It gives you just a little added weight down low. Overall weight of this, I think is around the 440 mark. 449, 450, somewhere in there. It seems a little bit slow overall with the Cedar and Lizard Pro combination. I don't know, um, just with this transmission, it, it doesn't seem like it has a ton of pop on 3S, but it's plenty to do pretty much anything. So, um, you know, it, it seems to work pretty well. And then I've just got an AGFRC servo on the front. It's the only one I had loose at the moment. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, this thing, it works very, very well. It's a little pricey for me for 3D printed stuff. And the work that you kind of got to put in if you're going to do like the rod ends and stuff, you know, you kind of got to provide your own rod ends and that sort of thing. So, you know, it's something to consider, but it's probably the best performer out there. Uh, it really is. So if you, if you want to spend the money, uh, you're going to be happy with the performance. It's just a little bit of a road to get there. 
not gonna lie, I was pretty beat up on the uh, install. It just is a lot, but it's probably the best one I got. So, you know, if you wanna put the time into it and the money, the performance is definitely there when it's finished. So you guys let me know what you think about this thing. This is the Slayer Elite Mullet and uh, from Texoma RC. So definitely go check him out on Etsy and check out his channel because he'll have plenty more stuff on this, I'm sure. So you guys let me know what you think and I appreciate everybody watching. Peace. So when I tried to hop over this rock right here, like I do a lot, uh, that's where I kind of noticed it's not as snappy as some of my rigs, but uh, you'll see I was able to get over it. Just kind of had to hit it right. The clearance on this thing really helps it do a lot of stuff. And uh, you can see once I just kind of got the front hopped over enough, it made it over that just fine. Um, I was really just kind of going out, hitting a few different lines that I don't normally run just because this thing kind of just conquers everything. And then you're like, well, let's see what else we can find, you know. Um, this line right here is a pretty tough little side hill to stay up on this rock right here. I was trying to do it where I stayed kind of on the rock with the right tire, keeping the left from falling off that ledge there. And then wrapping around and immediately making a turn afterwards. You know, I can get through there, but making the turn and going uphill afterwards, uh, you know, only one or two of my rigs will do this. And this one did it first try. You'll see right here is what I'm talking about, like hooking to the right. But you, you really got to just tow that ledge to keep your rear from dropping off and looping out. And then making the turn to go uphill right there. Um, this thing did it with ease. And then after getting up that, I was just kind of like, uh, where can I go now that's actually going to be a little bit of a challenge and a little bit of bad driving right here. I'll kind of let it loop out, but um, it would have easily just went straight on up that and would have made this side hill if I hadn't just messed up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, at some point it comes down to driver ability and I don't have much of that. So, you know, uh, you build all you can build. And hope for the best this line right here is uh pretty insane I, i've never really tried to go up this way and i like i said i was just out hunting new lines for this thing because it just did everything pretty easily and that's a pretty gnarly start to get started right there and this thing has the clearance you know nothing on the sides to hang it up uh, tons of belly clearance but it stays nice and tight and low and it's able to finally get a little bite with that left rear you can see that that's a pretty good little overhang that that thing's trying to hook on that's where those rear portals kind of help you know uh, having that little added clearance and i was able to get up that i was very impressed with that line really excited to make it up that uh, overall this thing is probably my best performer it just really is and i hope you guys will consider it um I know Josh has put a lot of work into this. He's he's a little down and out because he's just worked so hard on this one and it's took so much out of him. Uh, so, you know, it's good to support somebody that puts that much heart and effort into these things, you know, versus somebody who just pops out whatever and throws their name on it. Like, he's really put the work into this. So I appreciate you guys checking it out and uh, definitely know. let me know what you think about it. Peace.